Um, so first of all, I'd like to say a great thank you to the, both the Brain Foundation Committee and their donors for, for this grant. It means a, a great deal to us to get this project off the ground. Um, this project's looking at aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is really a, a devastating condition. For people that have an aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, there's probably about a 50% mortality rate before you actually get to hospital. Um, and the incidence of it is relatively low um, in comparison to other neurological diseases, but the, the impact is generally on a younger population. And because of this, the, the cost to the community is probably on a par with ischemic stroke um, in, in terms of both resources and the, and the you know, emotional costs to families and, um, and, uh, and friends of the person that's affected. There is a, an initial brain injury caused by an aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, um, and that's caused by a rupture in an aneurysm, which is a weakening of the vessel wall. Um, we can't do a great deal about um, the initial brain injury. It's difficult to predict who's at risk of aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhages. It's thought that there's maybe up to 5% of the population walking around with aneurysms in their head. We don't really know which ones are going to rupture. Um, but what we do focus a lot on in, in neurosurgical departments is um, how to prevent the secondary injury that occurs after um, you have the initial insult. Um, and one of the most feared um, things that happens after the hemorrhage is, is something called vasospasm, where you get um, spasm of the vessels in the brain caused by irritation of the blood. Um, and so in the natural history of subarachnoid hemorrhage, probably about a third of patients are um, experience vasospasm and our approach to vasospasm has unfortunately not moved on a great deal in the past 30 years. In 1989 there was a big um, trial called the British nemodipine trial which treated people with a drug called nemodipine for 21 days after their subarachnoid hemorrhage and that's the protocol that we still use today. Um, it hasn't moved on a, a great deal. So for this project I'm planning to look at um, the immune system in subarachnoid hemorrhage, and particularly a group of proteins in the blood called the complement system. And complement um, is a uh, sort of bombastic cascade of proteins that activate each other. It's activated by bacteria, and it's activated by foreign substances, and it's activated by things like bleeding. And it amplifies um, down this cascade. And in autopsy samples, in cases of vasospasm, we see complement deposition on the, on the um, walls of these blood vessels. Um, dysregulated complement has already been associated with a number of diseases and a number of neurological diseases. And our question is, is dysregulation of the complement system involved in um, the pathogenesis of the vasospasm? And if so, can we identify some therapeutic targets for this? And so we plan to collect some blood and cerebrospinal fluid from the patients um, that present to our hospital. We also plan to keep a bank of data and a bank of these samples for researchers to use in the future. And hopefully we can um, further the understanding of the molecular mechanisms that lead to vasospasm five to nine days down the line after the initial hemorrhage. Um, so thanks again to the Brain Foundation. <laughs>